Time for tonight's rewrite. When I brought home a bad report card, it never occurred to me or my parents to blame my teacher. We knew what the problem was. The problem was I just didn't study hard enough, or in some cases, I didn't have much aptitude for the subject. And some subjects I was simply afraid of, like chemistry. I never really knew what was going on in chemistry, and that was not the teacher's fault. None of my older brothers did well in chemistry, and they all promised me that I wouldn't do well either, and I met their expectations. I also hated and did badly in anything involving writing of any kind, which is kind of like wicked ironic since I then grew up to be a writer. That just points to the unpredictable ways we learn things. I couldn't be taught writing in school, but later, as an adult on my own, I could somehow get the hang of it. None of the teachers who tried and failed to teach me how to write should be blamed for my failure as a writing student. There are countless complex variables that go into what we call student achievement. The teacher is only one of those variables. More important factors are home learning environments, individual student aptitudes, individual student effort, the student's expectation, the student's family's expectation, the number of students in the classroom, the temperature of the classroom, undiagnosed eyesight infirmities that make reading difficult. The list goes goes on and on and on. And the more professional educators have considered the factors that go into student achievement, and the more they have attempted to address those factors, the more our politics have oversimplified them to the point that by the end of the first decade of the 21st century, our politics, Democrat and Republican, has reached the consensus that all perceived underachievement by students is entirely the fault of teachers. This idea has taken hold across the political spectrum. Show business liberals make documentaries that they think prove it's all the teacher's fault. A Republican president, followed now by a Democratic president, adhere to the belief that there is a regime of standardized testing of students that will measure not just the student's achievement, but teaching excellence. The blame the teacher movement began not as the product of reliable research on academic performance, but as a right-wing Republican political movement, an anti-union movement, specifically an anti-teachers union movement. Teachers unions were targeted by Republicans to take the blame for any disappointing academic achievement statistics in America. Republicans targeted teachers as soon as they saw teachers aligning themselves so often with the Democratic Party. Now, which party should the teachers' unions have seen as best representing their concerns? The party that wanted to cut taxes and cut spending on public schools, cut sports programs, cut, cut arts education, cut the band, cut educational resources across the board so that we could then have even more tax cuts? Or the party that wanted to deliver to teachers the resources they need in the classroom and the resources that every school needs to provide a full educational experience? In a creed de cœur to both parties, teachers went to Washington on Saturday for a Save Our Schools rally, and they were joined by exactly one celebrity. Matt Damon flew overnight from Vancouver to New York and then to Washington to address the rally and to address a right-wing website that has blind faith, blind to the facts, that is, blind faith in the blame the teacher theory. In acting, you, there, is, there isn't job security, right? There's an incentive to work hard and be a better actor because you want to have a job. So why isn't it like that for teachers? Do you, so think, do you think job insecurity is what makes me work hard? Well, you have an incentive to work harder, but if there's I, job I security... Be an actor. It's not an incentive. That's the thing. So you take this MBA-style thinking, right? It's the problem with ed policy right now. There's this intrinsically paternalistic view of problems that are much more complex than that. It's like saying a teacher is going to get lazy when they have tenure. A teacher wants to teach. I mean, why else would you take a 
salary and really long hours and 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 do that job unless you really love to do it that's how crazy the attack on teachers has become comparing public school teachers work incentives to the work incentives of movie stars it has never occurred to the teacher haters that teachers want to be teachers for any reason other than job security. It has never occurred to them that teachers might want to be teachers because they like teaching, because they love teaching, and because they care about their students. The right-wing attackers of teachers have never even shown the slightest curiosity about the job performance of another group of government workers who have very, very high job security, police officers. And police officers carry guns instead of textbooks. And as we've seen in New Orleans after Katrina and in countless other cases around the country, police officers have sometimes used those guns to shoot and kill innocent people. They have done so accidentally, which is in some cases understandable and forgivable, and some of them, statistically very few to be sure, have done so deliberately, maliciously, with full criminal intent. They have summarily executed people. The worst teacher in America could never do as much damage as the worst police officer in America. But the right wing has never even been slightly curious about evaluating the job performance of police officers. Never once has Republican world said, hey, maybe we should look into how police officers are carrying out their solemn public responsibility to serve and protect. No. No right-wing website in America is investigating or will ever investigate how well police officers do their jobs. The targeting of teachers has been a vicious and politically deliberate action, and it has been so successful that many of its fundamental falsehoods are accepted as true by both Republicans and Democrats in our ongoing dialogue about public education. I spent a few years after college as a Boston public school teacher, and I loved it, but I was never committed to it, committed to it as a career. I moved on to easier, better paying jobs like this one. Teachers who have committed their lives to the classroom deserve better than our politics has given them, and no one has offered a better rewrite of the current political caricature of the lazy, uninterested teacher clinging to tenure than Matt Damon did on Saturday. And no more important speech was given in Washington that day. So I was raised by a teacher who you just met. And uh, my mom was a professor of early childhood education. And And from the time I was in kindergarten, as she said, all the way through my high school graduation, I attended public schools. And I would not trade that education and that experience for anything. I had incredible teachers. And as I look at my life today, uh, the things that I value the most about myself, my imagination, my love of acting, my passion for writing, my love of learning, my curiosity, all of these things came from the way that I was parented and taught. And none of these qualities that I just mentioned, none of these qualities that I prize so deeply, none of these qualities that have brought me so much joy, that have made me so successful professionally even, none of these qualities that make me who I am can be tested. I said before that I had incredible teachers, and that's true. But it's more than that. My teachers were empowered to teach me. Their time was not taken up with a bunch of silly test prep, a bunch of drill and kill nonsense that any serious person knows doesn't promote real learning. No, my teachers were free to approach me and every other kid in that classroom like an individual puzzle 
They took so much care in figuring out who we were and how, how to best make the lessons resonate with each of us. They were, they were empowered to unlock our potential. In other words, they were allowed to be teachers. I honestly don't know where I would be today if that was the type of education I had. I sure as hell wouldn't be here. I do know that. <laughs>